Welcome back. This is still Why in the Morning. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Stephanie Ayeta. And we are on to our first conversation of the day. Remember, you can still talk to us at y 254 channel and answer the question we have asked you today. That is, what are some of your expectations for this year? And in line with that, we uh, have tailored our conversation around that. We want to tell you about planning and pursuing visions. And for that, we have been joined joined by uh, Mr. Kilion Amolo, who is a lecturer, consultant and researcher. Can you present Kilion? Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be here as well. All right. Yeah. So uh, it's the beginning of the year and people have plans for the year, at least resolution. And I don't know if resolution is the same as having a vision because some people say, uh, I, don't, I don't have a resolution, I have a plan. So is this the same thing? We can start from there. Uh, a resolution is not necessarily the same as a vision mm -hmm. uh, because a, a resolution is what you are deciding to okay. do as of now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's to do with the present. Mm -hmm. What you are doing now that will gauge the, some outcomes in the future. Mm -hmm. But when you are planning, you are basically forecasting. You are making projections about the future. Okay. Planning entails uh, uh, looking at the present situation Mm -hmm. and, and, and seeing where you want to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And you work backwards to see what you can do today to enable you to reach there in the future. Okay, amazing. And because of that, plans are normally futuristic in nature. So plans are futuristic. So there's a yeah. difference between resolution Correct. and having a plan. That's a vision. Yeah. So which yeah. one should someone have as they start the year? Do you have both of them or do you just work on your vision? Uh, as the saying goes, um, uh, a failing to plan means planning to fail. Exactly. People make declarations. Mm -hmm. people, make, people make resolutions year in, year out. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, you realize that you are still at the same point you were in the previous year mm -hmm. because you never had a plan for the same. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, it's key to plan. Correct. Planning actually supersedes everything else. So the implications of not planning is failing. Correct. Planning to fail. Correct. That is... Correct. Right. Because even at the end of the period, mm -hmm. when you want to evaluate yourself, you evaluate yourself against the plans you had made earlier. Mm -hmm. So the plans provide a standard or a yardstick against which to evaluate yourself whether you have achieved or not. Okay. So in the absence of a plan, you have nothing to gauge yourself you're to find out whether you are going somewhere or not. So that means you're just going through the motions of life Correct. without having a plan. Correct. Now, before mm. we get into the planning bit of it and how to plan, Let's talk about a uh, dream between a dream and a vision. Someone told me that there's a difference between the two. Having a dream and having a vision. Again, uh, explain to us the difference between uh, the two. The difference between a dream and a vision. Mm -hmm. uh, a dream is something that is still here and has not been actualized. Something that is in the mind. Something okay. that you are intending. Something that, that is still cooking. Something that you are creatively thinking about in your mind. Mm -hmm. And now this, uh, this, this dream is it's, it's made closer to reality by converting it into a vision. All right. Yeah, you make it to become closer to reality by making it to be a vision. That means you want to allocate yourself a time frame okay. in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, a dream still remains a pipe dream. It still remains vague mm -hmm. because there is no time frame that has been allocated towards its implementation or its achievement. But when you are talking about a vision, you may want to give yourself a time frame. Okay. Yeah, but I want to be here, say, 10 years or 20 mm -hmm. years from today. All right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the difference is the time frame. Yeah. And the implementation, and the bit, implementation of bit of it. All yeah. right. Mm. So let us now start with the planning, you know, for someone who just wants to plan for, uh, you know, the future, have a vision, but they don't know where to start. Correct. Give us a picture. Of how the it the be. starting point in the planning process is... Uh, understanding of where you are understanding where you are where you are mm -hmm. and that means you have to do a self audit and this is also what is normally referred to as a SWOT analysis eh? mm -hmm. the acronym SWOT stands for strengths weaknesses mm -hmm. opportunities and threats mm -hmm. you have to begin by understanding what are your strengths as a person my strengths and your strengths will not be the same. Okay. And because of that, the way I do the planning will not be the same way you do yours. Mm -hmm. Because I'm supposed to begin by understanding my own internal strengths and capabilities. Mm -hmm. And they use the same to pursue external opportunities. Okay. So before I begin by looking outside there for opportunities that are available for me, 
I have to begin by understanding myself from within. Okay. As your internal capability to be able to go for the external opportunity. Correct. Amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so what are my internal capabilities? What are my strengths? I may be intending, for example, 20 years from today, mm -hmm. uh, or, or let, let's, be, let's be a bit practical, five years from today to be a medical doctor, for example. Mm -hmm. Do I have the internal strengths and the capabilities to enable me to become a medical doctor, for example? Mm -hmm. You know, most people want to become uh, a particular, a particular, to have a particular career yes. after some time, mm -hmm. say time X. But mm -hmm. do I have what it takes mm -hmm. to go into that particular career, for example? Mm -hmm. That means I'm looking at my own unique strengths, my own internal capabilities. Do I have what it takes to pursue that path that I'm talking about pursuing. Mm -hmm. So that, that is normally the starting point in the planning process. Mm -hmm. Then after you have done your own self-assessment or your own SWOT analysis, where do you want to be? That is now where the vision comes in. What is your future identity? Remember, there is a gap between where you are now and where you want to be in the future, say five years from today. Mm -hmm. So after you have identified where you want to be in terms of what, in terms of when, in terms of where, where do you want to be in the yeah. future? And you have even allocated a time frame. Yeah. Then it comes in what you need to do to bridge the gap between the two. Because there is a gap between where you are and, and where, where you, you want, to, want be. to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So mm. you need to have a SWOT and do a SWOT analysis first. Yes, first, yeah. Okay. So what next after that? After you've done your own SWOT analysis and you have known where you want to be, which is the vision now. Mm -hmm. uh, you have known your, 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 your future identity. A vision is defined as a mental picture of the reality, mm -hmm. and it gives a future identity, either at a personal level or for an organization. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in the future? You need to define that. Huh? And at the moment you have defined where you want to be in the future, you need to begin by working today. Because most of us, we, 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 we always say that I want to be this after five years. I want to be that after 10 years. I want to be this. Then you do nothing about it today. That means that after you have talked about what ought to happen in five years, you need to understand what needs to have been done mm -hmm. in the next two to five years. Mm -hmm. Because if you can know what, 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 what you need to have done in the next two to five years, mm -hmm. it will be like a stepping stone towards achieving the five-year yeah. plan. And that means after two years, you will be in a position to say that, yes, look, I am on track towards achieving what I wanted to be in, 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 in a five-year period. All right. And after you have known what you need to have done in the next two to three years, you have to know what you need to do now okay. or what you need to achieve within the next five years, the next one year. Okay. In other words, I'm just talking about the hierarchy of planning. You need to break it down in terms of strategic uh, or long-term plans and then come to what needs to be done in the mid-term and what needs to be done now. Long -term. Because mm -hmm. what, when the, most people fail because they do nothing about what ought to be done today. Okay, so one yeah. can, you're saying one can have a plan but they do nothing about it. Yeah. So it's, it's as good as dead. As good as dead. So now it's the strategies that you need to have in place in Correct. order to accomplish that. Correct. And you've talked about the short-term, mid-term and long-term goals. Correct. So how do you identify this and how do you prioritize things? How because you, you might have a big vision, but how do you prioritize things? How do you prioritize your, your vision? Mm -hmm. uh, still, we, we, we talked about, uh, we talked about uh, earlier on mm -hmm. doing a, a SWOT analysis. You have done your own SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. You know your own internal strengths and capabilities. Mm -hmm. And then you look around, you've looked around and you've seen the opportunities that are available there in the market. Yeah. The opportunities that are available in the environment in which you are, the planning horror environment. You've seen mm -hmm. the opportunities that are available there. So what happens is that you are supposed to uh, not, 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 not force things. There will be a, an automatic match mm -hmm. between the opportunities and the strengths. Okay. There will be an automatic, automatic match, match. A bit between the two. Okay. And that will help you to realize that this is what I need to put. The strengths, actually, its priority comes in the strength areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even the weaknesses. Remember, weakness is something that is within your control. So you can work and on And you them can too. work on them and convert them to strengths. Okay. So that you have as many strengths as, 
as possible. All right. Yeah. Mm. So now, what happens uh, when people have uh, goals and visions and they actually don't... You know, most people come, come up with their resolutions at the start of the year. And by the second month or the third month, you know, they don't have anything. They don't even remember what they had set out. So what is the problem? Uh, the problem here, you know, a plan is like a roadmap mm -hmm. of where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Right? You, yes. may, you may set that, uh, for example, you want to go to Kisumu from here. There are several ways of reaching there. Right? Mm -hmm. You can go by air, you can go by road, you can go through the rails, right? Yes. There, 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 there are several ways of, of getting there. Mm -hmm. So if you just say that you want to go to Kisumu, let's mm -hmm. say in two days' time, and you have not allocated the how of reaching Kisumu, mm -hmm. you realize that chances are that you will not go there. In the same, uh, in the same uh, way, most people plan, but they don't have a strategy of how to execute these plans. Mm -hmm. The strategy here is talking about how to bridge the gap between the present and the future. Okay. You are here today, you have seen where you want to go. How will you get there? Mm -hmm. The how of getting there now is your strategy. Okay. Yeah, what are the actions that you want to execute to ensure that you reach there? So if you, are one, you want your plans to become a reality, ensure that in terms of your implementation, you have the action plans. What is this that I must do? And in terms of these action plans, you have to allocate some objectives mm -hmm. that within this time frame, I ought to have done this. And that. You have to allocate yourself object objectives. Okay. And these objectives need to be very smart. Smart here also is an acronym for... So how, okay, how smart are the objectives? Give us an example. Yeah, yeah. S here stands for specific. The objectives ought not to be vague. They have to be very, very specific mm -hmm. about, for example, y y our going to Kisumu, right? Mm -hmm. What objective, what, how are you going to get there? Okay. You have to be specific. I want to use a vehicle, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So objectives need to be very specific in the same way. Not vague, not general, but very, very specific. Uh, M here stands for measurable. At the end of the day, there has to be a way of evaluating whether you have achieved these plans or not. In, in that context, your objectives need to be very measurable. Okay, so you need to go back at the end of the, you know, at the end of the time, maybe at the end of the year, and Correct. check if you are able Correct. to achieve it. And that is what most of us never do when we make our resolutions. Mm -hmm. We don't go back to see whether, whether we achieved them or oh, not. Okay. Yeah, because when you are doing a self-evaluation at the start of the planning horizon, you are also supposed to find out what went, went wrong mm -hmm. in the previous planning cycle okay. so that you don't repeat that cycle of mistakes. All right. Yeah, so measurable. Mm -hmm. A here, these objectives need to be achievable. You know, at times we make objectives which can never be achieved. <laughs> you know, but we're told dream, dream big. It's free to dream, you know. Correct. So how, why, why achievable and how achievable should achievable be? Yeah, you know, you know your strengths. Mm. At the end of the day, you know what you can do mm -hmm. and what you cannot do. Though there are things that you can improve on as you convert your weaknesses into strengths. So when you are setting your objectives, you need to ask yourself, can I do this? That is the starting point. Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot do something, it means it cannot but never be achievable. Okay. Is it something that you can do? Mm -hmm. Do you have the capacity to do it? Uh, if it is, uh, I mean, uh, pursuing mm -hmm. a particular course, do you have uh, the technical capacity to pursue? To pursue to, it. Uh, to pursue it. Mm -hmm. That is what we mean by having something that is achievable. Okay. Right? R here, it must be realistic. Realistic. Very close to achievable. It has to be very, very realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, dreaming big is good. Right? But be realistic. At the be same realistic time. as you dream big. <laughs> uh -huh. And T here is time bound. You have to allocate yourself a time frame mm -hmm. so that you don't just talk about, oh, I will go to Kisumu. Year in, year out. Oh, I will go to Kisumu. And, and you end up not going there. So you need to yeah. know by this time, I need to have gone to Kisumu. Correct. Correct. And what is the importance of putting this down? You know, it's easy to know that I have a plan by May, I want to go to Kisumu. By, uh, you know, November, I want to have bought a car and what, you know, you have it in your mind, but what's the importance of putting it down if it's important in your the opinion? The importance of putting something, a plan down, you know, mm -hmm. we are human beings eh? and there are so many things in our minds and mm -hmm. something that you have not put down, 
uh, number one, you will easily forget about it. Okay. You will easily throw it outside the window. Mm -hmm. So the moment you put it down and you put it in a place that you can easily remember and remind yourself that it is this thing that I have to do, mm -hmm. you will always have it up at a point of reference. Mm -hmm. So putting a, planning, uh, a, a plan down helps, number one, to motivate you as a person. Okay. You will be motivated because you already know where you are going. Mm -hmm. You know, having someone who knows where they are going and having someone who is lost. The person who is lost will be so devastated, will be so discouraged in life and so on. Mm -hmm. But this person who knows where they are going, they will be motivated and put their all to ensure that they reach there. So you need to have it down in a place where you can see it so that it Correct. can motivate you. It motivates you, mm -hmm. right? And then, number two, it reminds you. Each and every time you look at it, you get reminded that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You will be seeing whether you are deviating or you are still on track okay. towards going there. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have to wait until the end of another planning uh, period to, to, to look back and say that you, you went off track. So when you look at it consistently, you get uh, reminded before mm -hmm. you deviate too much and you go back to the original plan. So it serves as a guide. It s serves as a guide, correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And the uh, tools nowadays, or at least the, in the digital space, people can do their vision board. And d do you advise for that, uh, the online platform, having it digitally or is it Correct. You can you have, have it di digitally online and set a reminder. Every other time. Every other time. Mm -hmm. It will be reminding you that actually you, you will be in, in the planning horizon after you put your objectives. Eh? Yeah. There will be specific activities that you will be doing mm -hmm. geared at, towards achieving your plans. So those specific activities, you need to allocate them a time frame on your, on your reminder. Mm -hmm. So that when it reaches a particular point, you get a reminder that you are supposed to be doing this activity. Mm -hmm. And then you do it. Next time, a different activity. Next time, a different activity. Because it's a sequence of events. The completion of one activity triggers the beginning of the next of one. The next one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, do they need to also be in, uh, is it a chronological order, but, or, or in order at least, for you to finish one? Because someone can have multiple things that they have allocated to do at the Correct. same time. Maybe Correct. in a month's time, Correct. you want to enroll in a course, you Correct. want to do this and that. So what is the importance of giving each its own time? Uh, the importance of giving each its own time depends on so many factors. Number one, the financial resources that you have. Okay. Yeah, if you have the financial resources that can enable you to have some plans going concurrently, mm -hmm. that is okay. And if you also have the time, we are talking about the financial resources and the time. The time. Yeah, okay. to enable you to do those activities concurrently that can work. Mm -hmm. However, in most instances, you realize that you have so many activities that you want to do, but very little time or realistically, very little financial resources. Mm -hmm. So this is where you need to prioritize and drop some activities mm -hmm. and concentrate on those that are deemed to be more pressing. Then, yeah. Okay. Mm. So when do you know that um, I need to quit on this? This I need to drop because sometimes you hold on to something so much and you really want to do it, but it's not achievable, at least at, not, at, least not at that particular time and you focus on the others. Uh, what normally happens is that when you are planning, uh, you need to not do it in a hurry. You need to have all the time mm -hmm. and incorporate everything in your plans. So when you are doing some activities and you realize that this particular activity was not in the original what? In the original plan. Mm -hmm. That means you have already started deviating. Okay. Yeah. So you need to stick to the plan. You need to stick to the plan. To the, uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, sometimes you set up with a good plan, you have a good plan, you've you know, tried, but things maybe are not working. Correct. And you decide to just give up on it uh, at the end of the day. So what instead, do you say to Instead that? of giving up, I would like to advise uh, our listeners is that our environment is very dynamic. Mm -hmm. Things keep changing. You might want to do this, and then after that, you remember like 2020, mm -hmm. who knew that COVID would be there? No one. No one knew that Surprise. it would be there. Mm -hmm. And it affected so many people who are in respective, uh, uh, almost all industries were affected in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So uh, given that, uh, that situation now, we understand the fact that the, 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 the environment keeps on changing. Now because of that, you also need to have a plan that is flexible enough to accommodate those unforeseen occurrences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that when things change, 
you also have some some slight, slight flexibility mm -hmm. to adjust your plan here and there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And for the vision, um, because we want to get into now pursuing the vision, who needs to have this vision? Because some people, are, they think, I'm too young. Why do I need a vision? I'm still in high school because we have a young audience also. So I'm still in high school. I'm not working. I'm not looking to go into a course yet. So why, where does, who needs to plan? This vision or of planning, everyone needs a vision, mm -hmm. irrespective of your age. Actually, that young person even needs it more than, more than that person who, is, uh, who has come of age. This person who is saying that I'm still young, I'm still in college. Yes, you are in college. But remember as we started, a vision mm -hmm. is futuristic in nature. Okay. And a vision is where you see yourself mm -hmm. several years from today, not even today. So you are in school, yes. But you need to begin envisioning where you see yourself in the future. Okay. You need to begin imagining the kind of career that you want to settle in in the future. Mm -hmm. You need to begin imagining the kind of lifestyle that you want to live in the future. Mm -hmm. You want to begin imagining the kind of investments that you want to have in the future. Yeah. So age is not an excuse. Or being in school is not an excuse for, having, for not having a vision. vision. Yeah. So Everyone needs to have one okay yeah and now uh, for parents you know nurturing young kids or young the young parents what do they need to do to ensure that the young ones also growing with this uh mindset because it all starts with the mindset and it's easier to adapt it when you're at a young age maybe when high school primary school the little things how do they inculcate this in the I, I want to urge the parents number one mm -hmm. to begin by helping the young kids to understand themselves, okay. to do a self-assessment or self-awareness. Mm -hmm. This is where everything begins. Okay. Understand yourself. After you've understood yourself, you'll be in a position to know your strengths. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the parents need to help their, their children to know their strengths, to know their weaknesses, and what they can do to convert these weaknesses into strengths. strengths. And based on these strengths, mm -hmm. they can offer the requisite advice that my son or my daughter, based on what is the reality on the ground, I see you more likely to succeed in this direction. Mm -hmm. You get that? Yeah. So the starting point is to do a self-assessment for these children and to help them understand mm -hmm. their strengths and even their weaknesses. And even to help them to, to, to build on their weaknesses. Because, you know, parents are supposed to be the ones providing an enabling environment. Yeah. yeah. And even to show them using their own strengths and even to teach them using their own weaknesses. They say that experience is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. So most parents need to be, uh, to be, to be sincere enough with their children and say that because, you know, most of us parents, we never admit that we make mistakes. Yeah, you're perfect. We are always <laughs> perfect. And most of us yeah. even lie to our children that, you know, I was always number one in school. Yeah, I only used to get A's. Correct. <laughs> While this is not the reality. Uh, yeah, so you need to be sincere in talking out with your children. If you're not living a life that you had wanted to live, tell them that, yes, we are living well, but this is not what I anticipated to have. Mm. Because somewhere down the line, I did this, this, and that that made me to deviate from my plans. Mm -hmm. And I'm living in a lot of regret. Okay. So this is the role that parents need to, to be open mm -hmm. and talk about with their children. All right. Mm. So and what areas should one have the vision around? Because when you talk about vision, it's easy to just think of the career and where you want to be in the next 10 years, what you want to achieve. What areas, apart from career, that you uh, need to have? Th this thing is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Almost all aspects of our lives, you need to have a vision. Okay. Not just career-wise. Mm -hmm. What yeah. areas do you need to have a vision? You need to have a vision. Uh, in terms of career, we've talked about in terms of investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is different from career. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, don't, you, you, you are employed, yes. For mm -hmm. example, you have a good career. But what happens if there is a COVID somewhere and you are sent home? Exactly. Right? So that means there is need for contingency planning. You are here, the career is working, all is well, but what if? Things shift. Correct. So mm -hmm. because of that, there is need for investment. So you need to have a plan for investment. Mm -hmm. When do you want these investments to be in place? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to ensure that these investments become a reality in the future? Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. How do you, are you going to finance these investments? Yeah. So that when you, when you come of age or when you retire, actually many people 
uh, from, from statistics. Many people die immediately after retirement. Because they didn't have a plan. Because they didn't have, have a plan. They didn't have any investments. Mm -hmm. They become so frustrated. And, 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 and some of them, they end up uh, squandering their, their, their terminal or, or retirement benefits immediately mm -hmm. so that they are left uh, being like, like, like social rejects yeah. and they end up dying miserably. So to avoid all this, you can plan for your retirement. You can have a plan also for retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what about in the areas of health, in the areas of family? Because you've said it's multifaceted. Correct. And people Correct. are going through a lot of Correct. mental issues. Correct. How do you ensure that, you know, you want to purpose to be this uh, in Correct. terms of your health you, and all you, that? You can, you can plan in terms of a family. In terms of a family here, we are talking about number one. But this one, it might be a bit difficult to do as an individual, mm. right? You need <laughs> because a family involves several people, mm -hmm. right? I may want this, you want, let's talk about now the two of us. Mm -hmm. eh? I want this and you want that, isn't it? Yes. So when we come together, you know, we have to agree mm -hmm. as a family to, to, to plan together. You compromise yeah. and then we Correct. take this road. Correct. And, and uh, find a road together as a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is the essence of planning as a family. You have to agree on the family size. Mm -hmm. You have to agree also, of even, even the spacing is also important. Okay. Yeah. You need to agree on the family resources that you uh, envision yourselves having mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. Yeah. And even in terms of health, that, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. you need to plan for all this. Okay. Yeah. And um, what about, uh, you know, you have mentioned that for that you need two people. Correct. And I've, I've been reminded about accountability. So you yes. have a vision, Correct. you have a vision board you're going. But what is the importance of having someone to keep you accountable? Correct. Uh, it is always good to have this plan to, uh, to share it with someone. Uh, mm -hmm. someone, that, uh, that someone who believes in what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Not someone who will discourage you. Mm -hmm. Because there are people uh, that, uh, that like, the, like I remember the case of the biblical Joseph, who yeah. had a vision, who had a dream, mm -hmm. and shared it with the, his immediate siblings, including parents. the parents. Mm -hmm. And they did not take it lightly. They did not like it. They sold him. Yeah. <laughs> so in the same way, you might tell someone about your vision, and then this person does not like it. And what they will do is to discourage you and discourage you and tell you, can you really do it? Mm -hmm. Right? I yes. remember there was a time, I'm sorry to say this, I told someone somewhere what I intended to do in life. Mm -hmm. And this person reminded me, but, but you don't come from a family where people have done this before. My. In other words, he was telling me you that I, I can never succeed because no one succeeded in my family. Hmm. You get that? Okay. So people like that, you, dev, you don't even talk to them again about your vision or what you intend to do. Okay. You will look for someone who believes in what you are doing. Mm. Someone who will uh, support what you are doing who will give you that moral support, who will give you a pat on the back and congratulate you when things are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the person you need to go to for accountability. Or someone mm -hmm. who has already succeeded in a particular field that you are going for. A you mentor. know, people, mm -hmm. yeah, people are always motivated by the success stories of other people. Mm -hmm. So when you can go to that person as a mentor and this person is willing to accept, to work with you in the journey, mm -hmm. that is okay. Talk to mm. us about a little bit about mentorship. What is the importance of having a mentor in attaining your goals? Why the, is it key? The importance of having a mentor, number one, is accountability, like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. You will always be accountable. That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, this mentor will give you a direction, will give you leadership. And remember, this is someone who is not just talking about what you are going to do, but is telling you what he has done, Mm -hmm. and has worked for him mm -hmm. right so this person will be telling you how practical it is for your ideas to work and how these ideas have worked or failed uh, for him mm -hmm. the another importance of having a, a mentor is that this person will tell you that this one mm -hmm. cannot work because maybe he has tried it in the past and it has done what he has failed, failed. Yeah. and maybe he, because of being ahead of you probably also by age and so many other things this person knows about what has happened elsewhere in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. probably more exposed than you are. All right. So this person will be telling you from experience. Uh, so, so your work will be much easier mm -hmm. because the chances of making mistakes will be minimized All right. when Amazing. you have a mentor. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have a mentor. And what yeah. about a career, a career coach? It's also wise to have a career coach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you. And uh, have a coach 
for example, uh, you know, different careers have got different structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have a coach who understands the particular career that, you're in. that you are in or that you intend to go in. Mm -hmm. And preferably someone who is already in that, in that career. career. Yes. Mm. Amazing. Because this person will be very, very practical with you and will tell you what has worked for them. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So now, um, going back to accountability and you've spoken about having the right person to share it with, what about having the right company in your journey? Because it's life. You're meeting new Correct. people every day. Correct. And it's easy for people to just uh, poison you and poison your mind. You had a Correct. good mindset. So what's the importance of having the right company? The importance of having the right company is that uh, you, you will always have positive people around you. Mm -hmm. If you have the right company, these people will be positive. And everything mm -hmm. they're telling you, they will be not aim, be aiming at discouraging you, mm -hmm. but encouraging you. Despite, these people will know your weaknesses. Yes. But they will tell you that despite these weaknesses, just work on this and things will work out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so have the right company. I'm still insisting on the word right company. The right company. Yeah, yeah because there are people who will mislead, you, not, not even mislead you. They will see things uh, uh, going bad, but they keep quiet. Mm -hmm. After they have kept quiet, then they begin saying Kimeuma. Kimeuma and Kimeuma. Leona, Correct. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to have people that will correct you. And correct. People who will correct you, rebuke you, people who will celebrate with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, the people to keep around you are the people who celebrate when you are celebrating. Mm -hmm. Not people who will moan because you are celebrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And there's something that I saw about dealing, uh, at least with pressures, protecting mental health, but maintaining a zeal to pursue vision no matter what. And there was a plan, you know, set out, at least, uh, I don't know if you agree with this, something about taking or, or just having a, it's like a sheet just to say, uh, my wins for today, my failures for today, what can I improve on? Correct. You know, something Correct. of that sort. What needs to be done just to protect your, yourself Correct. in that, your past you for That is okay. Vision. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is okay. And, and again, what mm -hmm. I would like to tell my, my viewers is that uh, most people live in denial mm -hmm. and they don't want to accept that they have weaknesses. You know, we are human beings. Mm -hmm. And by human nature, we, we, we have our own strengths and, and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And remember, a weakness remains a weakness. Number one, if you don't know that it is a weakness. Mm -hmm. And number two, if you are doing nothing about it. Maybe you know that it's a weakness, but there is nothing you are doing about it. Okay. So if you have a checklist of your strengths, mm -hmm. what is working for you and what is not working for you, mm -hmm. um, 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 uh, trust me, everything will be well for you. Okay. Because you will concentrate on what is working for you mm -hmm. and also do something about what is work not working to make them begin to work. Okay. Because you will begin to ask yourself, why is this not working? Mm -hmm. Because that is where most of us go wrong. You know that something is not working, but you are not interrogating why? further to find out why it is not working. Okay. Yeah. So you need mm. to dig deeper. You need to dig deeper. All right. To find out why it's not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And then there's something else uh, mm. written by one career coach. I'll read it. Over my career, I have learned that when I experience growth personally, it is often followed by a breakthrough professionally. The lesson work harder on you than your job. When you have experience, I will check it again. Uh, over my career, I've learned that when I experience growth personally, yes. it is often followed by a breakthrough professionally. Correct. So they're saying that you work on you and then uh, work on yourself harder yes. than you do on your job. Correct. Right. When you work on yourself, there will be some self-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And when you have that self-fulfillment, the motivation to work on your profession will be there. Okay. Because the motivation is coming from within. Mm -hmm. No one, do you know that things that you are told to do by someone else, you feel so bad. Mm -hmm. But something that you feel the push from inside to do, yes. you feel so excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you have personal fulfillment, career fulfillment becomes automatic because everything around you will now be working. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And what about, I think that's also in the area of personal development. So uh, in still in line with this, pursuing vision, how, how do you need to develop yourself uh, personally? How you need to develop yourself personally uh, in, in, in your career or, 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 yeah, let's say, for example, in your career, mm -hmm. begin by identifying where you are. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am here. I'm doing this role. 
at this particular level. It could be a managerial kind of job. Yes. But there, is, uh, there are different levels of management. Mm -hmm. We have the line the or lower management, the middle, and then the top management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So depending on the level where you are, and then identify where you want to be, then there is a gap, right? Yeah. So what do I need to do to get there? So you begin to do develop yourself. You'll begin to ask yourself, what skills or you what skill set mm -hmm. am I still lacking to enable me to get there? So that you begin to develop yourself in those skills. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is the breaking down that you Correct. were talking about. So Correct. when you know this is where you want to be, Correct. then you... Uh, align yourself with the skills Correct. that you you need and what is the difference between someone again I, I think you mentioned this what is the difference between someone who has this and is intentional about pursuing it and someone else who's just there and waiting for life to come as it's you know as it may the difference between the two is that you realize that the people who move very fast in their careers mm -hmm. upward mobility in terms of promotions and yet you'll find that someone has been employed for a long time mm -hmm. just doing the same role because they never, taken, they never took the, that personal in initiative mm -hmm. to develop themselves. Okay. Yeah. The, okay. the, 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 the labor market is becoming so competitive. Mm -hmm. We have so many graduates coming out of our schools and universities each and every other time. Mm -hmm. And that means you to keep pace with, with the increasing uh, supply of labor you need to continually develop your skills. Mm -hmm. You need to think outside the box. You need to look outside there and find out that, yes, what do I need to do now mm -hmm. to position myself? Yes, I already have the experience. That puts me ahead of those who are coming from, uh, from, the, from, from the universities. Mm -hmm. But what else do I need? Because suppose you are five people who have gone for a job interview. Yes. And we all have a 15 years experience. Mm -hmm. And we are five of us. And this interview has been done competitively without any vested interests. Mm -hmm. There must be a particular criteria that will be used to settle on one person. That criteria that will be used to settle on one person is what this person did in terms of their skill set mm -hmm. that the others did not do. The extra factor. Correct. The, that extra factor. Amazing. So it will give you a personal competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In so, your career. Uh, okay. And what else do you need in this journey of pursuing your vision? From all that we've mentioned, what else, maybe something that we've not mentioned, what else do you need to carry with you? What you need to carry with you in pursuing your vision? Uh, your vision? Mm -hmm. oh, we have talked about uh, goals. Uh, uh -huh. What you need again, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, plans earlier, right? And uh, we need also to talk about, um, just to mention about goals briefly, right? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about planning, mm -hmm. you are talking about where you want to go. Yeah. They are a bit broad and they are a bit long term. But now the actions that are going to take place here are what is referred to as the, 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 outcomes, the, the outcomes that you will need to come out of this. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the goals here. Okay. Yeah. What are the goals? Yes, I want to be there. That is the direction I want, mm -hmm. right? So, but what are the outcomes that, I, want from that, that I should want from being there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what kind of goals do you, should you have? Are they like general or at least something that we share in common or is it also specific to you? Now, in terms of uh, a career, uh, we are talking about planning for a career. Mm -hmm. You need now to put about goals in your career, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to become a senior manager in a particular profession, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you know what it takes to become a senior manager. You're already in middle management, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you need to do, like for example, in the next two years, okay. right? What actions do you have to have taken in the next two years that will position you towards becoming a senior, a senior manager, mm -hmm. right? That means yeah. you'll begin to think about maybe pursuing an, a course, for example. You will need to talk about uh, maybe uh, becoming a, a member of a particular professional body, okay. for example, mm -hmm. right? 
Now those are the goals we are talking about here. Mm. When you allocate yourself a time frame. When, because when you, when you go to a particular, each professional body has got its own prerequisites for joining. Yeah. And how long it takes you before you qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Now, um, going back to finances, because this is also a key aspect in accomplishing all that you've had in yeah. your plan. So how do you plan for your finances to um, fit the vision that you have? Correct. When you're planning for your finances, you need to have the vision in the first place mm -hmm. because the, pl the financial planning uh, actually facilitates mm -hmm. what you are planning to do at the yeah. end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the overall plans, yes. they have to be quantified. All those activities that you are supposed to be doing, they have financial implications. Mm -hmm. So you list the activities that you are supposed to do mm -hmm. and even when, because all of them are not going to be done now. There are things that you'll do today, there are things that you'll do after one year, there are things that you'll do after five years. And as I was mentioning earlier, the completion of one activity triggers the beginning of an another. another. So depending on the sequence of these activities, mm -hmm. you will allocate yourself a budget. The activities, the way they follow each other. So that you don't start, you know, most people start by thinking only of the present activity. Mm -hmm. But they never think of the next the next, next. activity yeah mm -hmm. think about the whole picture in terms of all the activities until the completion of your vision and then have an overall what budget after you've had an overall budget or an overall uh, financial estimate you can now bro break it down okay yeah and what should keep you motivated as you have your vision what would you advise just to someone what should keep one motivated as they pursue their vision? What keeps someone motivated mm -hmm. is seeing yourself there. Mm -hmm. I always tell people when you're working that the motivation to work, if you are working and you feel so low, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the payday, for example. <laughs> that will give you enough motivation. It will give you enough motivation to work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In the same way, if you have a vision and you feel like so discouraged, you feel like, will I ever reach there? Mm -hmm. Begin to see yourself being there. Begin imagining yourself being there. Just imagine the feeling of being there. Mm -hmm. It will give you the motivation to work hard to be there. Okay. Look at the people who have ever been there and begin to see yourself like the other person that you are aspiring to be like. Mm -hmm. It will give you the push to work hard to ensure that you get there. So it's also okay to have uh, online mentors, people that you can't reach, but Correct. you can Correct. watch mm. them and see what Correct. they've done. Yeah. All right. Mm. Amazing. And now, um, what what is the main take? As we come to a close on this conversation, what is the main take from all this planning and pursuing vision? What is the main? Main take. What mm -hmm. should someone take from all from for this? For a motive lunch yes. today. Yes. Number one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good for people to understand that without a plan, mm -hmm. you are doomed to fail. Because you'll just be rotating like this. Because you don't have a direction. That is the first thing that is good to understand. Mm -hmm. Number two, the plan tells you whether you are doing it or not. So if you have a plan, you will know at any given point whether you are walking in the right direction. Because these plans are aimed at bridging the bridge, uh, the gap between now and then mm -hmm. and then uh, finally it is good to have a vision always think of where you want to be no matter how hard things are mm -hmm. think about where you want to be because whoever will change that bad situation is you and not any other person and this bad situation will only change if you begin thinking about yourself differently and the way you think about yourself differently in the future is that vision that you're talking about mm -hmm. if you begin seeing yourself differently it will begin to work out mm -hmm. and have some action points that at this time I ought to have done this. Mm -hmm. By this time frame, I ought to have done this. So that you, you will look back at each time and see whether things are working as scheduled. Okay, amazing. Yeah. And what finally, what does it take? What does it take? You've mentioned the takes. What does it take? In does it, is it the drive? Is it one thing that it takes for you to be different from the rest to not give up along the way. Correct. What it takes to be different from the rest mm -hmm. is yourself. Okay. The motivation comes from inside. From within. The motivation, mm -hmm. intrinsic motivation that is internally generated, that is the difference. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. When people are planning, mm -hmm. you are also planning. When people are thinking of pursuing a career, you are also thinking of the same. So have that self-drive from inside. Okay. Never wait for anyone to come and push you. Mm -hmm. Because we are all human beings. Whatever you are told to do, you will always be discouraged to pursue. Mm -hmm. But whatever you find yourself pursuing willfully, you will always succeed in. Amazing. So self-drive is very important. Self-drive is key. Thank you Correct. very much, Kilian, for this Welcome. amazing uh, mm -hmm. insights that you've given us into this. So where can mm -hmm. someone get you on social media if they want to look for you? On social media, you can get me on, uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Kilian Amolo. You can get me on LinkedIn using the same name, Kilian Amolo. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get me on WhatsApp. Uh, my WhatsApp number is 0733. Five double eight two zero six zero seven three three five double eight two zero six. That's my WhatsApp number. You can also get me on YouTube. YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel is Kilion Amolo nineteen zero two. Kilion Amolo nineteen zero two. You'll get me on YouTube. Amazing. And we will interact there. Amazing. So people can see and, and hear from you on YouTube at Kilion Amolo nineteen zero two. Nineteen zero two. Thank you very much once again. Correct. That, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Kilion Amolo. Kilion Amolo. Yes. Amazing. Thank so that you. has been Kilion Amolo, a researcher, a lecturer, consultant, and also gives uh, career guidance. And we have followed you on Instagram, uh, Kilion. Mm. So you can also talk to us, follow us on our social platforms. That is at Y254 channel. And you can answer the question we have asked you today. That is, what are your expectations for the year 2023? Talk to us. The hashtag is Y in the morning or, uh, you know, uh, MCM, talk to us. Uh, we take a short break and then we'll be right back with the next conversation. Thank you. <laughs>